Hey friends, it's super late. I mean like really late, like 11 o'clock p.m. late, but I'm doing this because um, I was just about to record it and I said, what am I doing? Just do it live. It's a lot more fun to go live. So guys, if you're out there tonight and you're still up and you want to talk about stimulus i forgot to tell you guys what this is about this is about the stimulus um the stimulus bill that was introduced that was introduced by the senate republicans friends i'm seeing you now now you're popping up hello 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 good to see you guys um okay so abu thanks for being with me tonight hope Hi, nice to see you guys. As you're chiming in, just tell me where you're watching from. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the HEALS Act, the HEALS Act, which is all about the stimulus check, the second stimulus check. I actually have something new to talk about with you guys tonight because the Senate Republicans have given us something juicy to talk about. And so, um, as I said at the start of this video, I was actually going to film this and just publish it. And I said to my husband a few minutes ago, you know what, let's just do this thing live. There might be five people who's up, who are up right now who would want to join me. So thank you guys. And obviously there's a whole lot more than five people. For those of you who are new to me, I am Latoya McBean Pompey. Uh, immigration lawyer. Hi, Nadia. Um, uh, we share a name, actually. That's my middle name. Nice to see you from Florida. Uh, so let's get right into it. I have a great presentation that I'm going to walk you guys through. Um, and so share this video with your with on WhatsApp. Share it with uh, other people who are interested in the stimulus issues. Um, uh, we actually have something really, really good to talk about, and it's the HEALS Act, okay? And give this video um, a thumbs up as you're watching it as, as well. As you can see, I am super hype, and that's because it's 11 o'clock, and I'm live, <laughs> and I should be in bed, right? But I'm, I have so much on my mind about this stimulus act. So let's get into it, and thank you guys for, um, for joining. Okay, so stimulus bill, stimulus Stimulus. Let's talk about some money, guys. Money. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see the presentation. And I'm seeing all the, uh, the likes and everyone is chiming in. This is super exciting. Thanks again for joining. So let's talk about the Hills Act. This is the Senate Republican stimulus proposal. You guys may have heard in the news today that Mitch McConnell um, introduced a legislation that would basically put more money in the hands of people and but we're really going to talk about what where the money is really going okay we're going to dive into that okay so this is the heals act okay not to be confused with the cares act and then there's the uh, heroes act and now we have heals what does this stand for well it stands for the major themes that are in this uh this packet and so it's around health economic assistance, liability protection, and schools. So that's the acronym that they've come up with, uh, HEALS Act. Okay, so what's in it? Well, it's $1 trillion, okay? it's They're starting low, they're starting at $1 trillion, and unemployment benefits is also still in there. Let me take off my glasses so that I could read this a little better. <clears throat> okay, so... Unemployment benefits is in there, guys, but it's with a twist. It's a little different than what some of us expected it to be. And then certainly there's also a second $1,200 stimulus check that's part of this proposal as well. Certainly tax credits, lots of tax credits are in there for employers. And we're really not going to focus on the whole tax credit issue in this presentation because I really want to focus on what's directly going to impact you. Okay. Then there's also ish money in their um, funds to help students get back to school. As you know, the government is really pushing to reopen schools. And so there's quite a bit of dollars in there as well for schools to get, to get kids and college students back to school. 
Then there's also um, liability protections, guys. Liability protections for healthcare workers, schools, and employers um, who are at risk of lawsuits being sued uh, for the services that uh, they're providing and businesses who are opening their doors again to the public. There's risk that they also share with respect to people, customers, and others, and employees filing uh, filing lawsuits against them. So there's some protection in there with respect to that. And then there's some... Um, <clears throat> There's also some flexibility to states to use coronavirus relief dollars to help them with their budget shortfalls. But there are some limitations with respect to how states can actually use those COVID-19 dollars. They could only use up to 25% of those dollars for uh, to help them with the budget crisis that many of them are facing now. And then there's lots of other miscellaneous stuff, which I will not get into in this video because it doesn't really pertain to you. So let's talk about what really matters, what, what really pertains to you. And just so you know, before I dive into that, you need to know what's not in it because I've been getting a lot of questions on YouTube about hazard pay for essential workers, and that's not in this one, guys. It's not in this one. It's in the um, the HEROES Act that was proposed by the House Democrats several weeks ago. But hazard pay for essential workers is not part of this Republican plan. Also, what's not included, eviction protections, right? Which, as you guys know, um, quite a bit of those protections which were in place to help people stay inside of their apartments, a lot of those uh, protections have expired unless there's state proposals uh, or state orders, I should say, that would allow people to stay inside of their homes longer. And then lastly, what's not in here is additional or new dollars, I should say, for state and local governments. Okay, so let's focus on you now. Let's focus on you. Will the $600 unemployment benefits be extended? And so the answer is no, not under this proposal. And this is really no shocker, right? Because we know that, um, you know, quite a bit of the Senate Republicans were really not in favor of extending the $600 a week boost, right, in unemployment benefits. And in fact, guys, it's ended, right? It expired this past weekend. So that's pretty much gone. So what they're proposing to do is replace it by um, a $200 a week payment until the end of September. So basically over the next two months, those of you who were receiving that $600 a week boost would then get $200 a week until the end of September, which I know is pretty disappointing for many people. But again, keep this in mind that this is only a proposal, right? This is not the law of the land yet, so to speak. This is only a proposal, a, it, an important proposal, right? It's important because you have the White House who's on, uh, on board, and then um, some, many of the Senate Republicans are supporting this as well. Not all of them, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So all of this is really still up to negotiation. So I don't want to make it sound as if this is the, the end. This is it. No, this is just a proposal, but again, a very important proposal. And so, okay, so let's go back to the unemployment benefits um, structure here. So then starting in October, folks would get a payment of up to $500 that when it's combined with the state unemployment insurance payment would replace 70% of their lost wages. So that's as much as they could possibly get, 70% of their lost wages under this proposal. All right, what else is in here? Now let's talk about the stimulus check itself. Who will get the stimulus check? And under this proposal, guys, it's the same folks who got the first check, the same folks who got the first check. And so specifically, the numbers did not change. The numbers did not change. We're talking about 
$1,200 check for, um, to those who have an adjusted gross, who had, I should say, an adjusted gross income up to 75,000 per individual in 2019 or 2018, or if it's a couple who filed jointly, it's $2,400. This is a one-time check one-time check, and then $500 for each dependent. And what's different in this proposal than um, under the CARES Act is the fact that college students and adult dependents are now part of this proposal, whereas they were left out before. And then there's, um, as you guys know, uh, from the first stimulus check that many folks received, the check is reduced by $5 for every 100 in income. So it basically phases out at the $99,000 uh, point for those who are filing as individuals or $198,000 for those who filed jointly. All right, so let's, let's keep going. So what else is in here with respect to um, the stimulus check? Well, folks who have no income, they're still eligible. As, as are folks who are on SSI, they're eligible. U.S. citizens, guys, and this is for all of my immigration people, U.S. Cit this, is, this is limited to U.S. citizens and U.S. residents only, similar to the first CARES Act, the CARES Act. Um, so what that means is that mixed households, right? U.S. citizens who may have filed with an, um, uh, a spouse who uses the taxpayer identification number, those households are excluded from this proposal. So again, this is only a proposal. Lots and lots of negotiation is necessary to get to the final place here. This proposal, guys, also excludes dead people now dead people. If a person died before January 1st, 2020, a check will not be issued. Um, although I'm thinking, well, how would they find out that an individual has died? I don't know how they're going to find that out. But anyway, it also it excludes prisoners and debtors can't get the money except for uh, anyone who owes past due child support payments. And the IRS will send this money to um, those of uh, those folks who have a bank account on record at the IRS or an address, right? If you have an address, they're going to mail you a check. Um, all right, let's move on. Who else is getting the money? Who else is getting the money? Because it's not only the people, right? Because the people, according to this proposal, guys, is only going to get $1,200 at, or less, really, at, for an individual. So who else is getting the money? Because we're talking about a trillion dollars. Where's that going? The government. And the government will be getting a whole lot of money. And I'm going to show you a document that the Senate Appropriations Committee uh, prepared to show you exactly who's getting this money. But let me highlight three main ones here that I think is important for you to know. Um, under this proposal, there's about $306 billion in emergency appropriations. One hundred um, and five billion of those will go to students to again and to universities, I guess, to help get the students back in schools and also obviously to elementary and high school, you know, local schools. And then one point two billion loan to USCIS friends is also in here. Let me just shift to the document that I'm referring to here. So this is the um, document that is on the appropriations.senate.gov website, which breaks down where the $306 billion in, in emergency appropriations is going. And so uh, let's click on Homeland Security here. So under Homeland Security, we see that TSA is um, slated to get about $208 million, and then uh, FEMA is getting something. And then here it says, uh, and this is 
for my immigration people uh, authorizes 1.2 billion in loan authority for U United States citizenship and immigration services, right, to address its current revenue shortfall. And so again, they put in here, this is just a loan. They're borrowing, the USCIS is borrowing the money, right, just a loan. Um, so I wanted to point that out to you guys specifically, but let's go back up here and um, let me click on uh, the interior, right? Other agencies and departments here. So as you can see, we have, uh, no, let me go down to where it's like really interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, how about this? Give me a second, guys. Look at this. Library of Congress, friends. Library of Congress is getting some money. Seven million dollars, right? Seven million dollars. Department of Labor is getting a ton of dollars. Two point five billion. Again, under this proposal, it's not. It's it has to be negotiated. Um, yes, there's some dollars in here for the Department of Health and Human Services, obviously, because this is a coronavirus relief effort. But guys, um, the Department of Education, tons of agencies within the government is getting a lot of money under this. Um, yet, you know, twelve hundred dollars check is being issued to everyone else uh, the Department of Transportation their office of secretary uh, they're getting 26 million under this um, some federal aviation uh, administration operations they're getting money HUD is getting money I mean just basically it looks like all these government agencies are getting the money um, and I know there, what was the other one that I saw earlier that I thought was pretty strange? Um, hold on one second. Let me pull that up here. Oh yeah. How about this? How about this corporation for public broadcasting guys, 175 million. What is this PBS? That's PBS, right? 175 million to help them stabilize their programming on TV. So friends, you know, if I, I'm going to put a link to this document um, below so that you guys can see what the priority is on Capitol Hill, because clearly, in my opinion, the um, priority is not you or me, right? Let me just jump back on here. Hold on one second. Um, here I am. Yeah, the priority is kind of, it's it's whack. Let's see, it's late and I'm going to use that word. It's whack, right? The priority is not the people. It's not really the people. Yes, we're, you know, we're all excited that there's another stimulus check coming. But when, in, in the, when you look at it, everything in the totality, there's a whole lot of money that's being diverted right back into the government. And I was really surprised to see, you know, uh, PBS is on here and, you know, some other, the Library of Congress, right? I mean, really, I think people need more help, don't you? If you agree with me, just, just you know, say, let me know in the comments. Uh, but again, this is still a very... Um, uh, exciting proposal because it is a $1,200 stimulus check that the Senate Republicans are rallying around. And let me just go back to my presentation because there's other things in here. Hold on one second, guys. Let me jump back up here that I know that I wanted to cover with you. Hold on. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So what's next? What's next? Negotiations. And lots of it is really necessary. Uh, what's happening on um, the Republican side is that the Tea Party caucus, so to speak, they're pretty angry about this proposal because they think that it's basically the kitchen sink. There's so many, so many um, uh, departments and agencies and interest groups and everyone wants a little bit of this. And so they're angry and they're, they're you know, there's, um, there's almost like a little revolt going on. Um, and Mitch McConnell is trying to manage it. And um, so there's pushback within the Republican Party with respect to this Heals, Heals Act. And then Democrats are obviously disappointed, right? Because it doesn't include some things that are priority to the, 
priorities for the uh, Democrats. So there's there's a great deal of disappointment on their side. But again, they the, they the Republicans and Democrats have to come together and they have to talk about things and they have to hash things out. The White House, White House is basically supporting this. Obviously, they're supporting this because there's another stimulus check in it. And then there's all these tax credits in there that uh, uh, President Trump was really pushing for. And uh, lastly, guys, Mitch McConnell is saying that he expects negotiations to take to take weeks he was really hoping that this would have happened much quicker that um, the Republicans would have embraced their ideas last his ideas last week and that didn't really happen and so there's so there's that issue as well the timeline is a little bit thrown off before we were all thinking that they were actually going to vote by the end of this month and then started next month certainly checks would be rolled out but now uh, McConnell is talking about um, a lengthier uh, timetable, but we'll see. We'll see. Things can happen fast on Capitol Hill. And obviously, as we know, things can happen incredibly slow. So that's really where things are right now. And um, I'm going to jump back on here. So again, as I've said, guys, that um, I wasn't going to do this live. I was just going to record this and send it out to you. Uh, but um, I thought it would be more fun to interact with those of you who are up tonight. Uh, so Tom says, hey, Tom, nice to see you. Tom says, uh, trying to keep things um, from going belly up if there is another shutdown, artificial recovery, artificial recovery for Trump's election. Um, Princess says, thanks for sharing good information. Um, Pearly, people need to go back to work, but we have been working for decades and I can't understand why they're monkeying around. I completely agree with you. They had all this time, all this time to respond to the uh, the Heroes Act. I'm getting all of the, the CARES Heroes heels. <laughs> this is getting kind of ridiculous, but they had a lot of time to start working on, you know, negotiations with respect to the Heroes Act, because there are some elements from this that are part of the Heroes Act, but they didn't. They sat on it. And now a, a number of very important protections have expired for a lot of people, including the unemployment benefits, um, the eviction uh, moratorium, and some other uh, important benefits have also expired. So so I agree with you completely, Pearly. They just, they just waited way too long. Um, thank you so much for saying that, sir. Um, okay, so, uh, so that's that's pretty much it. That we're gonna watch the negotiations and um, let's see where they take this. Let's see where they take this when they sit down with the Democrats. Hopefully, I'll have something good to report out to you guys very soon. But um, still, good news. A stimulus check is on its way. Bad news is our government kind of sucks in the sense that they could have worked harder. They really could have worked harder and longer. And um, they really they really put in too much into this one that's just going right back into government. And it's not really going to reach you, the real people. All right. So with that, guys, thank you so much, <laughs> Alex. Always. Thank you, Alex Pombi for governor. And um, thank you for that. He's always saying that it, it, it delights me, as he knows. Um, thank you guys so much. It was fun interacting with you tonight. Um, get some rest and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.